Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Faisal Manju. I wish to speak on the topic of drafting Islamic will today. Very important topic because if a person dies without the Islamic will, the risk is he will infringe a lot of verses of the Quran. So when you die, there are two ways that can happen. If you don't have a will, this is known as interstate and the law of the land will apply. And if you have a will, then what will happen is your under the your will will be upheld because of the freedom of testation under English law. Now, as Muslims, as you know, one of the most sophisticated uh, area of law in Islam is a law of inheritance, very advanced, very advanced. So when you decide to draft a will, first thing you have to understand is what is a will? A will is an expression of a person, is a written expression, very important, the word written, because under English law, it has to be written. A will is a written expression of a person's wish regarding how his estate should be devolved or distributed after his death. That is, in a nutshell, what is a will. Many a times, we tend to confuse will with wasiya. Wasiya in Islam means, from a fiqhi point of view, your bequest. That is, Sharia allows you to up to one third of your net state, of your net state, to give it to whoever you want besides your legal heirs. Now, this includes non-Muslims, to a charity, etc. We'll come to that in a few minutes. So, what are the main ingredients you must have? Now, the very first thing you have to understand is you are living in UK. The law of UK must be abided to. The reason is you don't want your will to be rejected by the probate officer. So it is regulated by the Wills Act of 1857. There are certain conditions for a will to be valid. Number one, you have to sign it. Number two, it must be in writing, of course, and you must have two witnesses. You must be sane, you must be able to be appreciating the state that you have, the impact your will will have. You must not do things in your will which goes against the public policy. For example, if you have a duty of care towards somebody, you must observe that. There is a case law on that as well. And most importantly, from Islamic point of view is you have it according to your wish that will please Allah and yourself. So you must have it written, you must sign it, you must have two witnesses, you must be 18 years old usually, right? These are some conditions. I don't want to go too much in those details there. So once you have this in mind and you want to draft a will, the very first thing you do is you identify who you are yourself. Number two, you have to ensure that you have a revocation. In other words, whatever previous wills you have in the past, you must revoke that will. Very important. Because certain events of the past may impact on it. For example, there's a divorce or there's a marriage, there's a bankruptcy, whatever. There are many reasons why a revocation clause is important. Once you finish a revocation clause, the third thing you need to have is your own body. Remember as a Muslim, Rasulullah said in a hadith, three things should not be delayed. A girl once you get a good proposal, the time of salah, and the burial of a dead person. As soon as possible, you wish to be buried. And also very important is at times people are married to the Ahli Kitab and the wife might require the body. And now what do you do? 
Some people want to cremate the body. Some people don't want to bury it in an Islamic graveyard, Muslim graveyard. So it has its own ramification. Therefore, make sure you say what you want to do with your body, where you want it to be buried as far as possible. Now, there's another important question is the issue of organ donation. As you know, there are guidelines on NHS website. You can check it. You can ask your Oloma about your organ donation. That is your decision you take. But in England, this is a very important issue being debated. I would ask you to look into that. And also, some people want their body to be sent abroad to be buried abroad. That also, please consider properly because at time it costs a lot of money and your organ will be taken out, it got to some elements will be put into your body, etc. Whether you want to go through all those processes. So this about your body, consider those fiki issues. Once you have identified yourself who you are, you have revoked all your previous ones, even you didn't have it, write it. You never know what you have written in the past. Thirdly, make sure that you explain what to do with your own body, your coffin, dafan, where to bury you, etc., your salat, whatever. After that, very important, appoint one main administrator for your estate. An administrator will collate all the information regarding who you owe. Also, what do you possess? There are procedures to be followed. They will follow that. It is good to mention two. The reason I'm mentioning two is just in case somebody refuses to do it or he passed away. Just to be on the safe side, failing Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so will take over. Very important also is try to get somebody you trust. Somebody who knows a bit about your private life, like your wife or your husband. It's good to have somebody who knows about yourself. Once you finish, appoint him, give him the necessary power to administrate your state. The next one is you have to accommodate those who you owe. I don't know how to lay a lot of emphasis on that. Do not underestimate your debt. Make sure you pay your debt. Provisions are made for that, especially if you are in business, right? So make sure you have a list of the people you owe and that will avoid confusion to your heirs because you don't want after your death, people come and claim money and your estate has been devolved, etc. You don't want those headaches. And also from Islamic point of view, it is not nice to delay the payment of your debt. Prophet says that you must pay as soon as possible. And also there are hadiths on that. When a person dies, no intention to pay, he's cheating in his qabr, in his grave. What would happen? That debt would rotate around his head. This is a last thing you want to see in your qabr. After you finish pay your debt, very important to keep in mind is the tax. I don't know how to explain it to you. Estate tax planning, estate planning, our people don't want to understand. It can go up to 40% after your nil rate band. In other words, you got about 325,000, whatever you have, plus 175,000 for your residence or the house you were staying. Above that, there will be tax implication, which can go up to 40%. So ensure about this, that you are planning your estate accordingly to mitigate that. Because you don't expect after your death, your wife or your children to find liquidity to pay that. you got to make provision. If they have to pay, you pay. But you got to prepare for that. Make provisions, right? If you have property abroad as well, you have to take that into account under English law as well. So these are basic things about your debt, who you owe, and the HMRC also will also ask questions about these things to your administrator. So cater for that as well. When you finish all those things, then you do what you call a wasiya, a bequest. This is very important, brothers and sisters, because 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a, cho a chance to compensate for your shortcomings or even me, my shortcomings in my ibadat or an opportunity to create a sadaqatul jariyah. This one third, please do not throw this away. Use it if you have the means. If you have the means, use it because after your death, you don't know what will happen with the heirs, how they will manage theirs. It is theirs by the end of the day. So if you have zakat, outstanding zakat, you could not pay or hajj or whatever, uh, you use it. Or you want to give somebody who is not your heir, including a non-Muslim or a charity, you can give it up to one third your net state after you pay your debt and your tax. This is a very important element, your bequest, your wasiya. Pay attention to that, very, very important. Use it, whatever Allah has given it to you, right? Under the English law, you got freedom of testation, no problem at all, and use it to help other people for yourself after your death. The next one, what you do after that is you make provision for your inheritance, what you call mirath. That is, who will get what? You can put it in your will, you calculate it, you put it in your will, no problem with that. Or some people do say you do mirror will and then you do estate tax planning, you do estate planning and so on. That you can see to the experts to do it for you, right? So don't forget to put a clause there. If you want to calculate how many your children will get, your wife will get, you do that, no problem, okay? Remember, if you have a house, your spouse also will have, depending it is joint tenancy, etc. Again, consult your lawyer about this. Very, very important, right? Once you finish about your mirath, that is who will get what, you can put a provision there. Next stage would be if you have minors or people who are under you and they are dependent on you. Some people is not well, a very old person. These type of people who are going to be your heirs, you got to make a provision for them. Maybe you use a testamentary trust. In the case of children, who will be the guardian, for example? Very important. So you, in Sharia, you got rulings on that. See your mufti and get your rulings and you fill in your will. Another important, important, very important case is the case of, in case a family, an entire family wipes out for whatever reason, a disease, an accident, but it can happen. Then what happened to your estate? Make a provision. You call that residual gift. Make a provision in case there is no person who will inherit no legal heirs, you make everything sadaqatul jariya so that after your death also you can benefit inshallah the last one which i think very important i would advise you to consider is an arbitration clause you don't want after your death your children or your heirs go and fight it can happen so what you do you make an arbitration clause what is arbitration this is where you don't want to go to court, you appoint an arbitrator. The arbitrator will hear the parties and then he will make what called an award, not a judgment, an award. It's quasi-judicial. Then you, if person person doesn't want to listen to it, you can take it to court, you make it become a judgment. Of course, people can review, you can go for review. This is according to the Arbitration Act. It is legal to do that. There's nothing wrong there. So you can put an arbitration clause to ensure that your children don't go and waste money in legal fees. As far as possible, try to make them understand the importance of inheritance. Because inheritance, your will, believe me, there are hadith in Ibn Majah and so on, where if a person draft his will, that can be his salvation for the akhirah. A small action, it will take you maybe one hour, two hours to draft a will. And once this is done, inshallah, with clean heart to please Allah 
and also to look after your family, to make provisions for them, to make provision for your hereafter, to mitigate the risk of unnecessary dispute. This is a great ibadah that you are making. Inshallah, if you draft a proper will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, will give you Jannah just for that sake, inshallah. There are hadith of Ibn Majah. I don't want to go too much in that. There are hadith, hadith in Bukhari also, where Islam advises us to draft our will, not spend two nights beside this, etc. That is a topic on, on its own, fazail of drafting a will. That's a topic of its own. There's no time for that. So after you have fulfilled all those conditions, the next one is make sure you sign it and your two witnesses sign it. And important also is to date it. Don't forget to date your will. When did you sign it? Very important. And a will being a very important legal document, keep it in a safe place. Some people leave it with the solicitors. Some people will tell their wife or husband where they kept it. Make sure this is well preserved. Very, very important that you preserve your will. So this is a few basic elements you take into account when you draft an Islamic will. I hope this will be helpful for you. And inshallah, Aziz, don't forget to consult your lawyer. I am not a regulated lawyer by the SRA. So if you want any legal advice, you go to your regulated solicitors. If you want to do state tax planning, you go to the regulator recognized by the FCA. Very important, a small, small advice I'm giving to you. And do it professionally. It costs you some money, of course. But better pay £1,000 now and save a lot of money in the future. Save a lot of problem in the future, etc. For state tax planning, what the people will tell you is to use uh, the concept of trust. That also you can look into. right? If you want to make a walk-off, you can make walk-off via a permanent trust also. So this is another area of law, what's called a trust law. I'm not going to go into those details. So it's a very advanced area, even under English law, as well as under Sharia, a lot of things to consider. So I hope, inshallah, Aziz, this basic idea I've given, I've shared to you, you will be able to implement it. And also, if Allah wills, Allah will keep your children, your heirs in harmony after your death. And this will be a means of your Jannah in the Akhirah. So very quickly, I just repeat again, what you put, you consider when you draft Islamic will. Number one, you're going to look into identifying yourself. Number two, you revoke every previous will. Number three, you're going to look into your coffin, dafan, your body, etc. Number four, your debtors and your if there's any tax implication. Number five, your bequest, your wasia. Number six, you're going to look into your miras provision. Number seven, you're going to look after your guardian, your, for guardians for your children or whoever is under you and needs help. Number eight, you're going to look into your arbitration, no, sorry, your residual gift. Number nine is going to be your arbitration clause. And number 10, you're going to sign it and your two witness sign it. So very, very briefly, I have tried to make it easy for you to understand. It's not a train crash. It's not complicated. And any person well geared up will guide you, inshallah, all this. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to draft our will properly for his pleasure, for his pleasure, because whatever we have is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, I'll stop here. Subhanallah, bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu.